Module six, implementation, next steps. Now that you've met with your stakeholders, board, staff, and community, how do you take what you've learned and develop policies to advance your organization's work and best serve your community? This module will explore next steps by evaluating if your organization is prepared to undergo a cultural shift. We'll look at outlining opportunities to be addressed and create an execution plan. Lesson one, determining readiness. Determining organizational readiness is important when constructing a plan for equitable leadership. Such assessments help determine the current realities people experience within and outside the organization. They identify gaps in areas of focus, as well as new opportunities that could be explored. Questions you ask to identify gaps include, is the organization able to retain its most valued employees? Is there visible diversity at all levels of the organization? Does the organization have the right combination of employees and skill levels to achieve its goals? Are there assessments, processes, and programs in place to identify these gaps? Activity. You have completed a personal inclusion assessment. Now, complete one for your organization. The purpose of the organizational inclusion assessment is to help you determine where to focus your energy and develop your inclusion process that fits your organization's readiness level. However, there are steps you can take to work on inclusiveness, no matter where your organization's readiness may be. Look for the organizational inclusion assessment in your workbook. Answer each question. After you answer each question, convert your answers to points, then total your score. Determine if your score fits in the good fit, moderate fit, or not a good fit at this time categories. Pause the video, complete the assessment, and then rejoin me. What did you find? Is your organization a good fit? That means the organization is ready to consider a comprehensive strategic plan for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Is the organization at the moderate fit stage? That means it may be a good idea to start slow and focus on specific areas to develop inclusive strategies. Or is creating a DEI plan not a good fit at this time? That means a comprehensive strategy that might be a cultural overhaul will likely not work with your organization at this time. Given the level of buy-in and the resources available, you may need to take an incremental approach. Activity. Review the outcome of your organization's inclusion assessment and consider any information you collected to this point. You will outline a preliminary action plan. Review the chart in your workbook. There are three categories. The first is opportunity. Write down three to five gaps you have identified thus far. This can include training managers on giving and receiving feedback, revising the organization's mission, vision, and values, or auditing policies and practices. The second column is for actions to be taken. This could include reaching out to external consultants to lead training or conduct an auditing process. The third is ways to measure success. This could consist of before and after surveys, evaluating training, or creating a team of your in-house legal expert, HR director, and representatives from various levels in the power hierarchy to review the new suggested policies and practices and identify problems and solutions. Pause the video, complete the activity, then rejoin me for the rest of the lesson. Keep that preliminary action plan handy. You can build on it later. Regardless of where your organization lands in the assessment, you need four components to your DEI implementation strategy. One, build strength of evidence for the proposed change. What are the current realities being experienced inside and outside your organization? 
Where are the gaps that need to be focused on? What data will be monitored to determine progress towards your goals? How might you use a cultural audit, focus group information, engagement surveys, demographic data, and other stakeholder assessments? All the data you collected throughout this course will be relevant to build support for your initiatives. National and local data, listening tours, and the business case articulate why your equitable leadership goals are necessary and critical to the organization's development. Two, determine necessary leadership support. What is the commitment from leadership? How will you sustain encouragement from your managers and peers? How will you acquire financial support? Identify a champion who can support you in your absence. Champions can include peer leaders, board members, or other influential stakeholders. Three, create conceptual clarity. This is how you articulate shared concepts of diversity, equity, and inclusion. All stakeholders should be able to define and interpret terms in the same way. Everyone understands what the shared values and goals are and the organization's perspective on DEI. With this clarity, everyone can have personal ownership over their role in moving equitable practices forward. Four, outline an integrated approach. This framework explains how diversity, equity, and inclusion are intertwined in every department and throughout all levels of the power hierarchy within the organization. Complete this activity and I'll see you in the next lesson.